Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Lizzie, and for today's video, we are talking horror movie X. So this is an idea that I got off of Emma from Spooky Astronauts and Sarah from Possessed by Horror. Both did this video. These are things that in horror that just kind of like bother us. It's a little bit somewhat similar to like horror and popular opinions, um, but they're just you know things that often reoccur in horror movies that we're just pretty much sick of seeing. Um, and this is my list. So some of these ideas were inspired by their list, um, as well as just some of my own thoughts. So to start, we have graphic SA, sexual assault. Uh, this is something that I am just over. I feel like it's definitely getting less and less popular in horror films, but it's just, unnecessary um i mean i know that there are you know re horror there's like rape revenge films like the movie revenge where it's a whole part of the plot it like is what runs the story even like i spit on your grave movies like that but when it's an unnecessary scene or it's unnecessarily graphic or just far too long like i know there is a movie it's called irreversible where there's like a nine ten minute long sexual assault scene and to me like that is just I know that people have said like it's necessarily it's necessary for the plot of the movie but to me that's just like so ridiculous and I feel like there are ways to do that and kind of explain that it's part of the story without having to be so graphic. I think, spoiler, but for American Mary, that is a perfect example of a film um, that has a character going through a sexual assault that furthers her plot story, but it's not the whole story and it's not super graphic. There is a large chunk of the film and Mary's story leading up to that scene. Um, and it's not really a very graphic scene either. Um, and it twists what happens in the story. And that is also, I think I'm a little biased because that film is written and directed by the Soska twins. So I think that that also can have a very large impact on how a film deals with sexual assault on whether or not, like, we have to be honest on whether or not the film is created by a woman or a man or even just by a person maybe that's been through that um, can impact the story as well. And so I just think it can be done without it being too horrific. And if I know that there's going to be scenes like that in a film, I really just avoid those movies pretty much all together. And with that as well, kind of to piggyback off of that, unnecessary nudity. I understand obviously kind of older horror films like the 80s and 70s and so on um, had a lot of nudity, you know, women like taking their top off for really no reason, especially in slasher films when there's like a sex scene or they're going like if they're camping and they're going skinny dipping little things like that don't necessarily bother me too much but when it's so prolonged or characters clothes are you know removed throughout uh the process of a film for whatever reason um either by like a killer or they take them off and the characters just at, like completely nude and it's usually a female character let's keep that in mind uh i don't really if you can think of an example great i can't really think of many, of any examples where a male character in a horror movie is just running around naked um and even if they are you know they're shirtless we're not really seeing anything else um it seems to always be kind of the female character that's thrown into that and sometimes it's just unnecessarily long. I mean, I love women, uh, my very pride flag, uh, but that doesn't mean that I necessarily feel the need to see these characters portrayed that way, especially for like an either unnecessary reason or an unnecessarily long amount of time in the film. Uh, next, animal abuse, death. I feel like Emma from Spooky Astronauts explained this perfectly. When you're presented with an animal like right away and 
you know that that animal is going to be used as like the first sign of something going wrong in a film um, when they're just simply used for that. She explained it as like if it could be replaced by like a childhood stuffed animal then it's really no point point of the plot and I know that there are you know horror films out there where you know an animal is part of the horror and that's okay but like like one scene I always think of is the scene in Fear where uh, my Mark Wahlberg, his character, like the dog's head uh, through the doggy door, that is forever imprinted in my mind, which I also hate. Um, and I just, I don't need to see it. And I think especially it's something that's always bothered me, obviously, animal abuse, but working in the animal field, if you're new to this channel, I'm a vet assistant. Um, we see things and there are horrific things that happen to animals and for me personally dealing with it on a daily basis it's not something that I need to see when I'm watching my horror films you know they're an escape and it's just not something that I need added to it so yeah I'm getting emotional about it, it happens uh so yeah unnecessary like just Again, unnecessary really any sort of, I guess, abuse in horror films, uh, but again with animals. Off screen kills, especially in slasher films. This obviously again with kind of older films, before we were able to really capture it well with either, either FX or now like more so CGI, um, even though I prefer FX of course, but you know, off-screen kills where someone's being hunted by the slasher and then they're killed and we pan too. Now granted, I realize with my background, um, Scream is definitely a bit guilty of this, especially kind of in the first film, um, but I feel like they still do like a pretty good job of showing most of the stuff on screen and they definitely have continued to develop that throughout the series um but yeah if a film is still doing that if you can't get a good kill especially for a slasher film on screen and again there are exceptions you know if a film is meant to be rated a certain amount if your film is like EG-13. I guess I can kind of understand that, but it's just, I don't know, it feels unnecessary to me. Um, it just feels lazy to me, like they couldn't get a good FX shot or they couldn't even do a good like CGI shot of the film. It just, it feels lazy. Another thing, Annoying Kids, Baba Duke, I that is a film that I need to, I feel like, rewatch. I watched it once and I just could not stand that fucking kid, which I get that that's like kind of part of the point. This is a mother who is going through grief and dealing with things and having to deal with this kid. But I am just not, I'm not a big fan of kids. I am, you know, child free by choice is what they say. Um, I don't plan on having kids, but like I have friends that have kids and I absolutely love their kids even when they're being like just like saying out of pocket shit and you're just like, okay, you're a weird little child, but um, so like I love my friends kids, but when a kid in a horror movie is obnoxious just to like annoy us, it again, it feels like kind of lazy and I just, I can't stand, I don't want to watch a fucking annoying kid be annoying um, for the plot of your film. For the last thing, at least for now, um, maybe I'll do like another one of these if I think of anything. End screen explaining. And what I mean by that is when a film, you go through a whole film, especially slashers or killer films, um, if the film goes through and you are going through all of this stuff dramatic stuff, whatever, and then the film like cuts to and does like an explanation. That's so annoying and again like it just feels like lazy writing. It feels like they either didn't know how to end the film or they like 
couldn't capture it well and you know if they do rewrites if they do reshoots and they're still not getting it like and so they just decide to cut to explanation of whatever happens to the character next stuff like that like that is just annoying and lazy and I feel like again there are exceptions found footage which I'm generally not a big found footage fan but it can be understandable for a found footage film because again it's found footage you may have to like you know when they drop the camera at the end of like a found footage film and they you know end screen whatever um either and and not like a to be continued but like you know for sequels follow-ups whatever but like just to explain everything in a found footage that can kind of pass which i guess the whole dropping the camera thing could be like a ick in itself uh, especially since like i said not a big found footage fan anyway but just in general the cut to end screen we have to explain because we couldn't figure it out on our end uh is just really annoying and again just feels so lazy so there it is that is a list of just some of my horror icks like i said if i think of anything else maybe i'll do like another video down the line leave me some of yours in the comments uh maybe they can be some inspiration and i'll you know respond uh and let you know kind of what i think of those as well so i hope that you guys did enjoy this video if you did please do give it a big old thumbs up make sure you hit the subscribe button for more horror and spooky related content before i go a quick shout out to my patrons thank you guys so much for helping to contribute to the channel if you want to know the perks to being a patron there is a link in the description below along with all of my other social media and i will see you all again later bye